Welcome back. This is part two of my three video guide about restringing your rotary valves. I'm Melanie from Rogue Repair in St. Paul, Minnesota. And in this video, I'll be going through the same steps as I showed in part one. Uh, but in this video, I'll be applying them to some different lever shapes and setups. They can kind of stump you if you haven't done them more than once before. It gets a little tricky sometimes. So the goal for this video is for you to be able to follow how these same steps will still work regardless of what shape and setup of levers you have on your instrument. So that's going to be levers that run straight past the rotor, and that'll be both on the left side and the right side. Uh, the right hand side you'll see from video one. You can go back and watch that again if you want some review. Uh, I'll also go over levers that curve around the rotor, so usually that's going to be French horn fourth valve, so your trigger valve. So those I'll do both the ones that curve around in a clockwise and counterclockwise direction, so you can see how those both work. I had a somewhat limited selection also of actual instruments in the shop to look at because I'm currently staying at home like many of you might be at this time, so uh, you'll have to bear with a couple of pretty sweet whiteboard sketches. And they might be somewhat crude, but they will definitely get the point across of how a restringing that sort of example would work. So there's nothing to be intimidated by with tackling some of these different lever designs or setups. We can figure this out, so let's get right into it and show some examples of those. So the first one is going to be uh, just we did levers that were on the right hand side of the spindle, so we're going to do one that's on the left hand side just so you can see it happen if you're sort of that visual learner who needs to see an example. So we'll do this relatively quickly. The old string is already removed, so I've got my new string here. Uh, and this is also a string which is thicker, which I trimmed to a point with a razor blade without burning it, just to use it as an example. So I'm going to get my face down here so I can see what I'm doing. But as you can see, it went right through that hole. Um, and we're going again from outside to inside. Straight up the lever arm here and over. And we're going to twist this loop again towards the stop arm screw. And this one has got a really wide screw head, so I'm not able to just quite slip it down. So in this case, I will thread it sort of figure eight style. Did it. So scoot the lever is sort of resting on something right now, so it's pretty close to where I want it to be. So I'll tighten this down. I'll also need a thinner screwdriver blade for this instrument. So I'm gonna use my long thin bladed one. And snug down that stop arm string screw. Come around here. This horn looks like it'll be okay to go underneath, so I'm going to try that first. And the point is looking a little shaggy, so I'm just going to take some water and dress up the end a little bit. Still a little shaggy, but I think with that point, yep, got it through. And then make our last loop here. We've got our loop up and over and we'll still want a calculated amount of slop in. And I know just because of how the loop and how, which way I'm tightening the screw that I won't need quite as much so I am using a smaller uh, spacer for that slack. I'm actually going to take it out because what tends to happen with this setup is you get more slack because as the screw tightens that loop gets a little bigger. So you might find that levers which are strung on this side 
tend to be a little looser maybe when you put them together than your other ones. And there we go. And that's pretty snug. We're gonna go ahead and replace the string on this thumb valve. Just want to point out again we have our cushion towels just in case that's because I just had this second valve apart and the lever would have definitely hit the bell stem over here. And then on the fourth valve you can see it doesn't have a cushion and that's because it pretty safely rests against the spindle here. The biggest thing though is you make sure you want to let this back gently because uh, you could actually bend the spindle if it was to hit that hard enough under the spring tension. You also want to always look over here for your paddle because not all these fourth valves are the same, which is kind of why I'm talking about this. So here we go replacing the spring. It looks funny, it looks confusing because it's a weird different shape, but it really operates under the same principles as any of your other levers, um, which is this is all one solid piece just like this one, and it is moving alongside here and the stop arm is rotating along here so it's really no different than let's say a valve over here straight on that would have the arm on the left side so you can kind of think about it that way if it helps you that's how I think of it uh, but if not here is a straight up demonstration of how to replace the string on this one so we're gonna go from outside to in again through this hole in the lever And again, once I get this string through, our first move is going to be towards the end of the lever here. And then we're going to wrap it around the stop arm string screw, make our loop with the tail coming out underneath. <laughs> trouble getting it to squeeze between there. Alright, so again sort of holding the lever close-ish to where we want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and just tighten this stop arm string screw down. So I'm gonna try it underneath and we'll see what happens. If the string is kind of crossing itself, contacting itself too much during the motion. Actually it looks okay just as a test. We'll check it one final time once everything's all together. Here we go loop. And this is another case where it'll sort of create its own little bit of slack as I tighten the screw down. If I need to add more I will go back and add a little bit more but because the tightening action of this screw will sort of make that loop a little looser it seems okay yep we've got full range of motion here and uh, I don't have the camera on it right now but that string where it crosses here is not rubbing against itself too much so I'm going to leave it be as passing underneath itself and there you go that's how the fourth valve gets strung on this horn welcome to my super fancy high-tech uh, French horn fourth lever and Paxman one two and three lever diagrams I spent a whole 10 minutes on this, so hopefully it does the trick. So I'm just gonna tell you, show you these sketches since I don't have a real life example in the shop of these particular models. So uh, there's a lot of Holton French horns that have this sort of shape of the fourth valve. It's sort of the opposite direction wise of the con lever, but again, all these principles of how 
you follow the string around from where it comes through the lever to start with. These are all applicable across any design. So again, we're going to come from the outside in, parallel to the lever here, around the stop arm screw, and then back around and out here. And uh, using this as an example, if you're ever not sure of which end the stop arm should be starting on, just remember that the lever arm end and the stop arm screw are moving in opposite directions when the lever is being activated. So, so you can imagine the spring, if the spring is pushing your lever this way, then that means at rest the lever end is going to be moving this way. So follow my hands like this. And then, so if that's true, then this guy, the stop arm screw, is going to be resting at this position instead. So that's how you can choose, decide, rather, which place it should be sitting when you start restringing your valve. It'll save you having to kind of pick up a bunch of extra slack or let out a bunch of extra slack as you go. Save some time, less confusing. Uh, so that's the Holton shape. There's some Yamaha fourth valve levers that are this is probably not a super accurate representation, but levers over here for your thumb. There's a little bit of a wiggle here, and it's a straight bar that comes up this way. The newer models have an articulated arm here, so there's basically just a hinge uh, in place over here. So that's sort of the Yamaha fourth valve. Not all of them, some of them. The Geyer wraps, of course, will have the fourth valve down past the third valve. So Paxman levers, they have this cool kind of crocodile-y, I don't know about cool, but it's how they make them, a uh, little crocodile mouth at the end of your lever. So that's basically just this part turned 90 degrees sideways. Here's your string screw, just for visualization's sake. So on these guys, the string sort of rests right in here. So. Uh, it wraps around the end instead, and that's where it goes on Paxman levers. So, since I don't have real examples, uh, I am going to show you with the marker where the string would go if I was doing it. So, uh, it's just going to be me tracing a brown colored line through a blue colored sketch. So, here we go. Here's our knot for this one. And you'll just have to imagine all my crossing underneath at the screws. But directionally, this is how they go. So here is our knot for the Yamaha one. And underneath. And through. And around and underneath again. And then last but not least, here's the Paxman one. There's a knot. And we're going to go outside of this because it would sit in that little groove that I showed you on the end. Boom! So even though this doesn't have a hole, um, we'll still end up with a little loop here that you'll add that calculated amount of slack back in when you install the string. So. Hopefully these crude sketches helped um, and they were clear enough to give you an idea if you have any of these kind of lever setups that you're working with and hopefully this kind of helps uh, make a little less guesswork or frustration if you haven't tried to restring one of these designs before.
Thanks for watching part two of my video series about restringing rotary valves. If you'd like to, there'll be links here for you to watch parts one or three, and you can just click on those to go to those videos. Again, I hope you learned something or this video helped you out. Thanks again for watching.